All right, so today I want to show you how to palpate your female ball pythons for follicles. And essentially what the follicles are, they are the immature eggs inside of your female ball pythons. And when you pair up your snakes early in the season, usually the follicles are about the size of a BB and they get bigger and bigger through the season. And I'd say about 45 millimeters is when your ball python ovulates. And then about a month later, you'll actually get a clutch of eggs. And it's really helpful to actually see the size of the follicles. As a matter of fact, I kind to cheat I actually use an ultrasound I bought an ultrasound my very first year in ball pythons it was a really big investment is about a thousand dollars for the least expensive ultrasound that you get that's like an entry level and I can actually put the probe on the snake and put the follicles up on the screen and then freeze the screen and then take some really accurate measurements of the follicles but I say if you don't have the money to buy an ultrasound machine I say most people bring ball pythons they don't have that kind of money especially if you're starting out you can actually palpate for follicles and essentially what you do is you take the female and you let it run through your fingers then you can actually feel the eggs and kind of get an idea of how big the follicles are inside the female ball python and it's really useful especially if you're trying to time the follicle size with the breeding a lot of people say that you should actually breed about 10 millimeters and then again at 20 millimeters and then again at 30 and then some people do like another breeding like at 40 or 42 and then about 45 millimeters they'll actually ovulate and then after that it doesn't really do any good to actually pair up the males and the females because when they ovulate that is when the eggs become fertile and breeding after that doesn't really make any difference doesn't really help at all so what I'm gonna do today is I want to show you some of my ball python females and I want to show you how I palpate for follicles all right, so I'm gonna start with this pastel calico female down here. I should be able to feel the follicles on this girl really easy because she just ovulated just a few days ago. So her eggs should be really big. It should be pretty easy. Look at how big this girl is. I've never actually tried to palpate one <laughs> actually right after they ovulate. It should be pretty interesting to actually do this. So essentially what you wanna do is you wanna have the tub open just a little bit just so they can crawl in and then you want the snake to kind of relax kind of stretch out and relax you don't want the snake to really be that stressed and this girl you can tell she is full of a lot of eggs so you just kind of let her go right in and the follicles are actually in the bottom you have to cut yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't really work if the female is really kind of tense she has to be really relaxed so sometimes it just takes a little bit to take her out and kind of play with her and kind of get her just a little bit relaxed so you can actually feel the follicles. So then what you want to do is you want to put her in the tub and have her slowly go into the tub while you feel right in the belly. And usually in the last third part of the snake, you can actually feel the follicles right down in here. <laughs> and I actually missed it on that one. So she's, she's a little bit tense still. She's a really big snake. You can definitely tell she's full of a lot of eggs. And sometimes it takes a few times to actually get it right and get the female to relax. And what you have to do is you have to put a, thing, a finger on the bottom and a finger on the top. And you have to squeeze just en enough to where she's crawling through your fingers. And you can feel a little bump there a bump there and a bump there <laughs> she's tightening up a little there's a bump and then here is a bump right there you can definitely tell they're big almost like chicken egg sizes you can feel right there there's another one right there and the, the last one's probably right there in her tail she definitely has some big follicles all right, so I pulled out this other really big head caramel albino female. She is really super big. And I'm going to kind of give you a different angle on the camera. This girl's been breeding, and I'm pretty sure that she definitely has some follicles. And she's going pretty fast here. I can definitely feel one, two, three, four. Uh, I felt four big ones right in her belly. I think I missed a couple, but she definitely has some really big follicles. 
All right, so I'll have to admit I'm not that good when it comes to palpating females. I usually use my ultrasound. And take a look at this girl. This is my pinstripe. She was definitely going to lay some eggs this year. Look at how big and beefy she is. Really awesome looking female. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate this one. Give you another kind of an angle with a different snake. And the kind of the trick is, I'm going to try it um, and see if I can get them to go a little bit slower. You can definitely tell she is tense right here. It's always in the bottom, kind of the bottom third. There's, there's a good one right there. So I felt one right in there. <laughs> and let's see. Uh... Oh, I felt another one. Uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of weird because sometimes you really can't feel them. I felt two of them in this girl. And sometimes you have to just kind of try a couple times to actually pull them out and put them back. And some people say it takes years of, of working with snakes to actually palpate them and, and actually feel the follicle size. I've seen some people where they can actually uh, get to the point where they can actually feel even the small ones, like the size of a dime. And the funny thing is, is kind of, I know I can't really show you what this feels like, but she's actually pretty tense right underneath now. And it feels like kind of like little rolls that she's kind of moving with their tail so it's definitely not working with this girl very good right there you kind of have to get them completely relaxed where they're really super just kind of relaxed and chilled and sometimes it just takes you know kind of working with her over and over and over to actually get to the point where you can feel the follicles i've actually seen some people where they'll they'll kind of get the snake relaxed and they'll move their hand down like this i can definitely tell she's moving her muscles and it's it's a little bit difficult but it's, uh, I'd say there is definitely a trick to palpating females, especially when it comes to uh, smaller follicles. I can definitely feel one, you know, right in here and right here and right here. And then she's kind of, kind of moving her muscles in there. And when she moves her muscles and kind of moves it, she, it almost feels like there's a little bar moving like this all the way through her tail. And when she moves her muscles, I can't really feel anything. So you really want to get to the point where the snake is completely relaxed. But I definitely felt a few in this girl. You know, some people can go through and they're like, oh yeah, I feel seven follicles. I know she's going to lay seven eggs. But on this one, I just felt a few like three or four, and I'm not really that good at it, but it, it just takes a lot of practice to actually get to the point where you're doing, uh, figuring out the follicles. It's, it's kind of interesting on this girl, because I think they're a little bit smaller than the last one. I think that's what's giving me a little bit more trouble. You can definitely feel them in there, like just little tiny balls. I say they're probably only about that big in this girl. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And CJ You Don't Know asks, when I'm starting to breed ball pythons, is it better to start with a recessive or a codominant mutation? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, starting out in ball pythons, it really depends on what you buy initially. For example, when I first started out, I decided to get into recessive, decided to get into pides, and actually bought a male visual pied and a female visual pied. And if you breed them together, you actually get a whole clutch of visual pies, which is pretty awesome. I think it gets a little bit discouraging, especially Especially if you're new, if you're trying to go after hets and then, you know, use the hets later on to kind of breed them back. Sometimes it, it can get pretty frustrating if you have, you know, producing a whole bunch of snakes and they all look like the normal, classic, wild type ball pythons and you're not really, it feels like you're not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, I've seen some people do this where they'll actually, you know, breed into this really awesome project and they get kind of discouraged and I've seen people like unload a whole bunch of of normal looking snakes and sometimes they're going for like the double heads or the triple heads and they're really struggling early on in their ball python career and sometimes they'll just unload the whole project sometimes they'll actually get out of ball pythons so I'd say if you're doing recessives I would probably go with you know two actually at least a het for one and then a visual for the other so at least 50% would be visuals and I would probably recommend actually you know your very first breeding probably going with uh 
a co-dominant or a dominant. You could do either or. Remember, the co-dominant actually has a super, and most dominants don't actually have the super form where you can have two copies of the gene. There's a whole bunch of different things you can get into. And as a matter of fact, I actually started in recessives, and I quickly transitioned over to a co-dominant, and that's kind of why I bought Bobby here. Bobby is my male bamboo ball python, and I bred him. You keep in mind, if you actually breed this to females, you can breed it to multiple females. So I actually paid a lot of money for this snake back in the day. And then when I bred them to a bunch of females, I ended up with a whole bunch of bamboos. And they're really awesome horse. Really visually stunning. Makes for a really exciting beginner project if you're actually going for something that is really awesome and a co-dominant because you can see all the babies on what Bobby's doing here. Driving me crazy. <laughs> what are you doing, Bobby? He is a really cool snake. Probably the friendliest snake that I've ever seen in my life as far as a ball python. I've never really seen a ball python that is as friendly as Bobby. Never tried to bite me. And I can do pretty much anything I want to do with Bobby. And he just puts up with it. He's a pretty amazing snake. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video.